Hey guys, Adam here with Sentinel 3D, and today we're going to be reviewing my Zeiss T-Scan Hawk 2 handheld laser 3D scanner. So this review is going to be pretty informal. It's just going to kind of give my thoughts on the scanner. Again, no experience with the competitor scanners. So just take everything I say with a grain of salt. The last time I had experience with a handheld laser scanner was on a Faro arm, and this was like a older model and the results were just terrible. So this is kind of my first time getting back into a handheld scanner. Typically and historically, I've primarily used structured light scanners. There's a few competitors to this particular scanner being made currently. There's Creoform, which has been doing this type of thing for a lot longer. There's Shining 3D and 3D Scantech, which are two Chinese companies that make much cheaper options that seem to do the same thing. I haven't used them. And then Hexagon just entered the market as well. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about what this scanner is. This is a handheld laser scanner that has a bunch of lasers shining out, line lasers. Um, this one has blue line lasers, which is good. Uh, the more modern ones will be using blue line lasers and not the older red line lasers. Two cameras here on the front that can look at how those lasers can form over the part and collect 3D geometry. It's also capable of tracking target stickers. There's also a photogrammetry mode built into this, so you can actually put stickers all over something big, take a bunch of photos with this scanner using the cameras built into this scanner, and build a point cloud from all of those target stickers. Then you can come back in and actually scan the data. So when you do that process, you also use scale bars as a part of that process. And that's what scales all of your data. And basically that allows you to get a good accurate point cloud of all of those target stickers first, and then you can come back in and scan your data. The scanner will scan maybe about like four inches up to 13 feet as far as the range goes. You can, you can scan smaller things, but given that I have a structured light scanner as well, I'm probably just always gonna use the structured light scanner for those smaller items. Um, this is primarily something I'm using for the larger size stuff. All of these features are pretty comparable to all of the competition, I'd say. And it's really going to come down to using it and figuring out which system is best for your needs, I think. So why did I purchase this 3D scanner? So I purchased this 3D scanner because I'm coming from a background primarily dealing with structured light 3D scanners. And structured light 3D scanners are kind of slow they are very accurate, but they're slow. They're kind of hard to maneuver around. You can't get them into tight spaces, and then you're kind of limited to whatever their measuring volume is. So my Steinbeckler 3D scanner, which you've probably seen in previous videos, can scan items up to about 500 millimeters without having to stitch out. So I wanted to be able to scan things bigger than one meter, but I didn't feel comfortable doing it with my Steinbeckler. And so I purchased this scanner because one, it's going to be faster. Uh, two, it's going to be able to fit into tight spaces. And three, it's going to be able to scan much larger objects. Uh, the next question you might have is, well, why did I go with this brand specifically? Uh, in previous jobs and stuff like that, I was primarily using GOM 3D scanners, GOM Structured Light 3D scanners. And those scanners were just rock solid, like the software never crashed. It was just an amazing user experience over, overall. The hardware was nice, the software was nice. And so I was like, okay, I can get demos from all the different companies, or I could just go with a brand that I have experience with and that a, a brand that I have a lot of confidence in already. Um, I think at the time I'd been using some, maybe some software or some hardware that was pretty substandard. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to risk it. I'm just going to go with the best brand I know at the time. So that's kind of why I went with Zeiss. Uh, you'll see later in the review that, you know, maybe that wasn't the best decision. Maybe I should gotten, have gotten some demos from some other companies. All right, so let's talk about my first impressions. Uh, first thing is the quality seems a little bit cheapy just on the outside, the plastic grip and stuff like that. However, it is uh, very lightweight. It's very ergonomic. It's easy to hold like this and to scan with. It also has these buttons here on this side that allow you to basically access 
certain functions without walking over to your laptop, which is nice when you're scanning something kind of far away. It's also a very fast scanner, especially coming from structured light where a scan can take two hours or more sometimes. And then switching to this where a scan can take as little as like 30 minutes to complete. This has been much, much faster. Another thing that I noticed kind of straight out of the gate is that I wished I had not purchased a laptop separately and then tried to set it up myself. I wish I would have just purchased a laptop from Zeiss directly and had them set it all up before giving it to me because I tried to bring my own laptop. The laptop didn't have the right power settings and it was just kind of a pain to try to get those all set up and working properly. So just purchase that laptop and avoid that headache. I was also very impressed with the calibration process. It's all very simple, straightforward, very fast. Um, you have kind of a quick calibration object here, this little small scale bar. And then you have a larger calibration panel here that you use less often, I would say, but I typically end up using the full calibration before starting most of my projects but it only takes about five, 10 minutes, so it's super quick. All right, so let's talk about the long-term ownership experience of using this Zeiss scanner. I would say overall, uh, just after six months, I've been pretty happy with the system. I would say it's a good, but not great system. And who knows, maybe if I were to compare the other ones, I would have a different opinion. I've been really happy with how fast it scans. I've been really happy with its performance on shiny or metallic parts. All of that has been awesome. Uh, glossy blacks and stuff like that, it'll still do a good job of scanning those, which I was really pleased with and really surprised about coming from structured light uh, scanning. So I'm actually having to coat parts much less with this scanner than I was with a structured light scanner. Uh, but there are some drawbacks that I've experienced so one of the things that was kind of new for me is understanding its accuracy capabilities. So Zeiss does list a accuracy spec for this thing, which I was excited to see because typically Zeiss doesn't list accuracies for their structured light 3D scanners. But then I also had to go through kind of a paradigm shift myself learning about how this thing's lasers will interact with some surfaces. So for instance, typically when it comes to 3D scanning, matte white surfaces are ideal for 3D scanning. However, not all matte white surfaces are created equal. I've learned because um, with my structured light scanner, I could use these matte white ball bars in order to gauge the scanner's accuracy. However, with this 3D scanner, uh, the lasers, I guess, are strong enough to wear the light actually kind of pierces this semi-porous surface, and it'll actually measure these spheres smaller than they actually are, which was kind of a new thing for me. So you kind of have to understand what these lasers are gonna work well on, what they're not gonna work well on. Something else that's been difficult for me to deal with has been the software reliability so I purchased this Zeiss system because Gohm's software in the past had been rock solid and I wanted to purchase a system that was going to have that same stability. I didn't want to have to mess with any software issues. I knew that Gohm's software in the past was amazing. It was perfect. It never crashed. No issues whatsoever. Uh, however, that has not been the case using this particular scanner thus far. I've been experiencing occasional software crashes. And in addition to that, Zeiss now makes you use this software launcher called Zeiss Quality Suite. Zeiss Quality Suite is anything but quality. That thing has so many issues. Um, first of all, you're going to have issues logging in with your Zeiss ID once you download it. Then you're going to have issues where it's constantly logging you out. You're also going to have issues whenever you try to access the help from within Zeiss Inspect because it's going to pop you back out to the Quality Suite to access the help in there but then you've already been logged out, so then you have to log in again, and you're just constantly having to log back in. Um, it's just an incredibly frustrating experience. I don't know why Zeiss felt the need to make the quality suite. I don't know what problem it's solving for the customer. My guess is that it was more of a marketing move than a 
software meant to actually help the customer. So hopefully that improves in the future and it's less frustrating, but that's just kind of been my experience thus far. I've also been experiencing more crashes and issues within Zeiss Inspect itself. And then I've also experienced just kind of random issues when using satellite mode. It doesn't occur often enough to get like really frustrated with the system, but it is a small annoyance. And it's an annoyance that I was not expecting to have going with Zeiss. So I think that's been the most frustrating thing about it is just having that high expectation and then just coming back down to earth and realizing that, hey, this isn't a perfect system. There's, there's some issues with it. So now let's talk about the improvements that I would like to see with this scanner going forward. Zeiss, if anybody there is watching this review, I think one of the biggest things that could be improved is Zeiss Quality Suite and just the quality of the Zeiss Inspect software as a whole. Again, it used to be amazing, but now it's having a lot of issues. So please focus on making Quality Suite useful and not annoying. Something else that I think would be beneficial for customers is if the system came out of the box with some sort of a mobile scanning uh, system. So one of the things that I've found super useful with this system is I built a Milwaukee packout stack to store all of my uh, fixturing, uh, to store the computer, to store the uh, power cables. And it's just, just been super handy to be able to have this mobile workbench to come with me on scanning jobs, to be able to put my laptop on, to be able to put all my cables in, all of my fixturing, all of my odds and ends. And so hopefully maybe in the future, um, Zeiss can come up with something better than what I've built here using Milwaukee Packout. So just to summarize, I think that this is a really good scanner. I wouldn't say it's a, a great scanner, but I've been overall pretty pleased with it. It gets the job done. Most of the time, there's only been one time where I've had to leave the job site with the job not done and then come back later. There's been a few reliability issues. Hopefully Zeiss can continue to work on those and fix those. Overall, I've been fairly happy with it. I hope that th this helps you out if you're looking at getting a, a scanner like this or this particular scanner. And of course, if you have any questions about any of the things I've talked about or any questions about the ownership of this particular scanner, just put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you on those. And with that, that's all I've got for this video. So I will see you in the next one.